Hi everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Academy at Chesterfield Golf Club. As you can see, we've got a beautiful summer's afternoon, so I thought I'd make the most of it and come outside and show you another video. This one being about what's called matching up. You might have heard that statement. Now, what is matching up? There's two different ways we can match up. We want to, this club wants to be matching up with us on the correct plane, and then with our rotation of our body, this club wants to be matching up with that as well. Let me show you what that actually means um, in theory and then show you some shots that we can do and some drills that we can do to try and help with that. So let's crack on. So we can see I've got my, I've got a yellow stick here that's determining my kind of my plane at the, at the, uh, the address. So that yellow stick should be relatively similar. It doesn't have to be over the top. But I'm showing you what that actually looks like. My plane is that yellow stick. And obviously that yellow stick and the plane will change if my, uh, if the club's a little bit longer, so let's say a driver, it will have a naturally flatter plane and with a wedge it will be a little bit steeper. So that's why, if you think about why Bryson DeChambeau has his clubs all the same length, apart from his driver I think is a bit longer, is he's trying to keep the same plane throughout no matter what swing he's got. All he's got is a different face with less loft. So it makes sense actually to have that same plane with each swing because he's standing the same distance away with every club. Okay, so this is with an eight iron that I've got now. So that's my plane line with an eight iron. So what really we're looking for, in an ideal world I would say, is to be kind of quite close to plane, if not slightly steeper on the backswing. And on the downswing, we're looking for halfway down, you were looking for this club to be matching up relatively similar with the plane we've got there. From here, because now we're what's called on plane, we can now just release this club back to square without really any manipulation. If there was any steepening going on, if I release now, I'm going to miss the ball. I'm probably going to miss it on the outside. So there's going to be compensation. So that's called this first exercise, matching up plane. So back swing and down swing, trying to match that up as best I can. Look back at the ball, couple of little pumps just for some momentum. And then we're now letting go of the release because we can. If this club is on plane, all I can do now, well, I shouldn't say all I do because it's difficult if you're in the wrong position, but this is what's called changing the internals. I'm changing the internals of my golf swing, which is basically hip height to hip height, halfway back uh, before and after the ball. Very difficult to change, extremely difficult to change. If you're in, if you've got the, if you're in the wrong areas, extremely difficult. So this is why we do these freezer exercises and check. Okay, now we're just letting this angle go because now we're on plane. We can just let this angle go without any need for manipulation. Obviously, I'm giving it a little kick through with my knee, but my main feeling is to be able just to now release this angle I've got here because I'm on plane back to the ball. If I was in the wrong slot, if this was too flat, which obviously is better than I think over the top, but especially if you're too steep, if you're in a different plane than what I started with, I now can't release that back down to the ball. I'm going to have to do some sort of compensation or some external movement to counteract that. And that's always going to be inconsistent. If anyone says I want to be more consistent, let's say everyone wants to be more consistent, ranging from the tour pro down to the club golfer, this is what you've got to try and do. So matching up number one is matching plane. If you can match plane, you probably, you're probably going to help the club release a little bit better. Now, with the release factor of matching up, I've got a stick here. So what does matching up your release, the way the club releases down to the ball, as well as the turn through? A lot of people who are in this position, that's why I've given you the first exercise as the plane, people that are in this steep outside position cannot do this next one. So that's why the first one's always going to be about how we are in, on plane halfway down. Halfway down, remember folks, is left arm parallel-ish to the ground. Probably a bit lower here, I can see, but you really want this club trying to match up your plane as much as you can. So that's gonna give you a bit more chance to get this club down to the ball without any manipulation. Okay, let's work on matching up release now. 
going to show you what that means. So when we're at a dress, I'm going to put like an arrow, which is basically coming out of my torso, twisting back. So I can do this with one hand, so it's not that easy. So really what we're looking for, we're looking for a twisting of the body and a releasing down of the hands. If you're on plane, so let's say we can do this at home, hold this angle, you can give yourself a little bit of look into a mirror or a, um, a window behind us to check we're on plane correctly. Now we're not looking for this, this to go too early. We're looking for this club now to release back onto your center. Then on the follow through, both your body and your release should match up from here. So really the ultimate match up should come halfway through your follow through. This is where both lines should match up. So backswing, obviously the club's gonna be behind where this angle, this uh, torso's looking. Downswing, obviously there's still a, a behind with this golf club compared to the body. Impact, the body should be slightly leading, but you should be now releasing into impact with the body slightly ahead. Then on the follow through, they should be matching up. And that's where all these exercises that we've done in the past on the channel are going to help. Okay, so drill number one that I'd like you to do to make sure all that's correct is backswing without stopping, but halfway down. We're stopping halfway down, elbows touching. Make sure I'm on plane. Looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be millimeter perfect. Perfect. Couple of little pumps. Remember, we're just releasing this club back to the ball whilst we're turning through. And there's our both lines matching up with each other. It looks, it looks easy. It's relatively difficult if you're in the wrong position. Remember, it's a great one into a net to practice. You don't have to go hitting it too hard. I've only got an eight iron here. Okay, make sure I'm on plane. Couple of little pumps. Make sure I release and turn through. Really good internal exercise to work on our internals back before the ball and then after. So it's practicing play and then practicing release, matching up. Matching up with our release, which is matching up our turn of our body with the release of our hands and arms. We don't want to be too much one way, which is too much release. That's what I used to do back in the day. We don't want to be too much open and that keeps the club face probably open as well. So, and then that's from drill one we can do without stopping on the way down. We're gonna do it all the way through without stopping and we're gonna stop. And remember on my favorite exercise, the hit and hold drill. So we're imagining and feeling this position halfway down. Now we're not gonna stop, not gonna hit it full out folks, because we're gonna to have to stop halfway through. And there's the matching up the release. So that's exercise number two. We're not stopping halfway down. We're just doing the hit and hold exercise that I've done on previous videos. Or you can do this one. So there's a third version of it. You're gonna stop here, make sure you're on plane, and then you're gonna swing all the way through and you're gonna do a full follow through. So you're gonna basically feel what the matching up release feels like it. You're actually your your finish of your swing because if this is different, the hit and hold position, it will be different at your finish as well. So the finish is a good guideline to where you've been beforehand. Remember, it's all cause and effect. Drop in the slot, let it drop. No tension, nice and light. Turn and release. Got it a bit thin. Fantastic exercise. So remember, there's different versions of matching up. There's matching up your plane. Now, we see different backswings all over the place. Jim Furyk, we see people that drag it on the inside. But nine times out of 10, elite players, and especially the guys you see on TV, and the ladies on TV, the, cl the club is on plane halfway down, which is relatively close to left arm parallel. From there, the release happens, so you're matching up the club with your body. The body is turning, a little bit of weight shift, and then through. Just juggling all those parts together. Remember, the best way we, we can do that 
is to do some drills and break down exercises and checking all the time. Fantastic way to, to kind of build some consistency into your swing. Plane matching up, release matching up. Any questions, love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for coming by and supporting the channel. Love to hear from you how this, um, how this feels for you. And let's hope, I've lost Trev actually, he was around somewhere. Let's hope this sunshine carries on and we'll see you on the next video. Have a good golfing week everyone and I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.